Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in today. We have Dr. Dhanushri Kulkarni, Dr. Amit Nigare, and Dr. Rohini Panigrahi with us today, joining us from Pune. Today's topic is coping with children's health during this season. Over to you, doctors. Greetings to all. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Um, gre greetings to all. Uh, so finally, the rainy seasons have are about to uh, begin after a long uh, uh, drought of uh, summer vacations. Children will be starting with schools as well. So there's a lot of uh, queries amongst parents and uh, teachers about the general well-being of children during the rainy seasons. A uh, change in season will always bring upon a new weather condition, introducing new illnesses in children. So not just care during the illness, but also preventive measures are equally important. So we are here to discuss about all your queries. You can uh, put it in the live chat box and we can address the queries as and when the questions are asked. Thank you, doctor. We'll start with the questions now. The first question that we have today uh, is for Dr. Dhanashri. How to keep our kids immune from viral during the rainy season? Hello. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Dr. Dhanashri. Yes, yes. So just like Dr. Rohini said, no, typically monsoon in India is, you know, the second name can be a doctor season. So you will see that the doctor's clinics are flooded with patients. This is very typical. And uh, in India, we always see in the monsoons, you know, a lot of viruses will raise their heads. Typically, flus, you know, cough, colds, they're rampant everywhere. You know, families will be all coming down with the flus. Even other viral illnesses, like last year, particularly, we had this hand, foot, mouth illness, which was very prominent and it went on for quite a long duration. So those viral illnesses, then others like, you know, mosquito bone viral illnesses like chikungunya, dengue, all those kind of things. So a lot of illnesses, we find them surfacing in this particular season. So to start with to how to build up the immunity in the children, beginning from the very young ones, like the newborns and the infants, the best way to give them a solid start and to boost their immunity is breastfeeding. So we cannot, you know, emphasize more on how important breastfeeding is. There are literally living cells of immunity which get transferred to the baby from the mother's milk. And it really, it, it gives a solid start to the babies. It is some, one of the few things which can help prevent allergies also later on. Since nowadays everyone is talking about allergies, it's become so common. So this is something which can even help prevent from that. Apart from that, as the children grow older, we have the proper schedule of vaccination which is given to them. It is expected that they should follow this and take the vaccines on time. These are very helpful in preventing dangerous diseases. You know, a lot of uh, bacterial infections when, against which we are vaccinate, vaccinating the children very regularly. You know, they have helped the rates of pneumonias and, you know, lower respiratory infections, ear infections, meningitis, these kind of illnesses. They have helped us to bring down the rates to a considerable level. So, you know, it is a reminder for the parents to not miss the vaccination. This is something which will help to build up their immunity and prevent the illnesses rather than later on spending time in treating the illnesses. So vaccination is very important. Maintenance of general hygiene, cleanliness, you know, like uh, if there are any doubts about what kind of water is being supplied, better to use boiled and cooled water. Then general hygiene measures, you know, if there are very young children or babies to avoid, you know, a lot of crowds visiting them. Or if we are aware of like through the newspaper or the media that there is a particular illness which is circulating in the community, avoid crowds. If it is, you know, uh, very young children, we cannot expect them to wear masks and all. But generally those who are about three years, if we know that a particular virus is circulating and if you need to visit some crowded place or attend some functions, they also need to wear masks along with ad adults. Frequent hand washing, hand sanitization, all these things which are very small and simple measures, but they do go a long way to you know, build, prevent severe illnesses. Also to emphasize a proper diet, uh, we see it's very common, you know, it's not just the lower socioeconomic uh, group, but even, you know, those who are in normal well-to-do homes, sometimes deficiencies are very prevalent, like, you know, because children are picky eaters, you know, they're choosy. So iron deficiency is very common, having a low hemoglobin that also contributes to a poor immunity. So these kind of things which can be easily tackled by home measures, you know, 
keeping up on their diet having a good amount of fruits and vegetables in the diet good protein intake this also goes a long way in preventing infections thank you dr thanushree uh, moving on to the next question we have uh, that is for dr amit how to calm down an excessive crying baby my twin baby boys are now 2 months old and the younger one cries so loud that he holds his breath for a few seconds while crying and throws his hands and legs he cries continuously for 2 to 3 hours during nights cuddling swaddling nothing helps i think so this is a very pertinent question and this is i uh, i think a nightmare for the parents sometimes in the middle of night they come running to the hospital uh, because child is crying excessively and sometimes it uh, most of the times what i think it is related to the the gases and usually with the time it settles off usually the gases issue will take around 6 months of time to settle off so little bit of home remedies tummy time will help getting rid of gases as well uh, it might be related to cow's milk protein intolerance because it is very uh, uh, sometimes uh, cow's milk protein intolerance the baby is having uh, intolerant to the cow's milk and it will cause a problem so they will start crying immensely and this is the one of the symptom of cow's milk protein intolerance and in india we are very uh, downplayed the cow's milk protein intolerance uh, infants so eventually with the time at 6 months almost 6 to 70% of the cow's milk protein intolerance goes away and almost 2 years almost 90 80 to 90% of goes away so just with the time and a little bit of avoidance of food and a little bit of home remedies i think it would take care thank you thank you dr ramin the next question is for dr rohini and the question is how to prevent uh, virus and infections while sending them to school um so addressing to the same question dr dhanashi has already uh, said about uh, how the prevention can uh, be taken care of uh, starting from a uh, breastfeeding which can be started initially in life so it's been said and it's also scientifically proven that children who are uh, breastfed till 2 years of age have greater immune system as compared to the other peers so uh, breastfeeding is definitely preventive so uh, making sure that uh, the child is breastfed for uh, as long as possible is one of the measures before the sending them to school secondly uh, make sh- making sure that the vaccinations are completed and all the due flu f- vaccines or influenza vaccines for the child has been covered before the child goes to school so influenza vaccines as everybody is aware of is uh, a yearly vaccines and it's it's given usually more after 6 uh, months of age in a, and the next shot is given at 7 month 4 weeks apart following which yearly vaccines have to be given so for every school going child before the rainy season hits at least 2 to 4 weeks before the child should be immunized and should have covered the flu vaccine as well uh second important third important aspect being uh now since the awareness of covid has happened we are also masking up the children so more than 2 years children should be allowed to wear mask in school as well especially around the flu and rainy seasons it not only uh, prevents from infections but also from dust smokes pollutants so allergens for that matter so uh, asking children to wear mask in public areas should also be uh, emphasized the third thing being the sanitization proper hand hygiene most of the diseases are either airborne or waterborne so ha- maintaining proper hand hygiene is equally important uh, not only emphasizing on uh hand washing but making sure the child follows the all the steps of hand washing so uh, diligently this should be practiced at home the child should be made aware of it and also in schools the teachers responsibility should be taken care of that the child should wash their hands properly uh also we have to make sure that uh, the the child who wears this, uh, any uh, 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 the clothes which a child wears that should be also be washed cleaned with detergent uh that is also emphasized upon and uh, when in public areas or in areas where there are lot of mosquitoes or water uh, contaminated regions 
children should wear full clothing so these are the one of the these are the various preventive measures which the parents can uh, always uh, think about and practice at home and during the school times thank you dr rohini moving on to the next question what are the basic precautions to be taken if parents have cold so that the baby doesn't get affected? My baby is eight months old. This question is for Dr. Amit. So mainly, basically, uh, what we have seen that elderly people in the homes also get the flu and they can transmit the flu to the, the younger ones. So whole family should be vaccinated vaccinated for the flu vaccines. If there are uh, very young uh, children or infants are present uh, at home, so that they will not catch the infection. Or either they catch it, it will not be, they are not severely ill. So this is the one of the precautions. Second will be the hand hygiene, the hygiene precautions, like wearing of the mask while feeding the baby or taking care of the baby. Uh, and uh, most importantly, hand hygiene has more of is important. And as uh, Dr. Dhanushri has said, the nutrition has its role, uh, proper nutrition of the kids so that uh, breastfeeding from uh, two healthy nutritionists, uh, home diet will be helpful for the uh, taking care as well as preventing them from the infection. Thank you, Dr. Amit. Moving on to the next question. This is this question is for Dr. Rohini again. What about oil massage and baby bath in this season? Um, so these are very, these are very small queries which always uh, raise a, a question of doubt amongst parents. So uh, oiling and bathing can be done during the rainy season also uh, for infants. There is there is no absolute contraindication. Uh, mas gentle massage and uh, bathing once a day, sometimes twice a day can also help. But one has to always make sure that uh, the water, the temperature of the water and the environment is also uh, normal. It should not be very cold. Uh, basically, it is a difference in the temperature, extremes of temperature that can cause uh, uh, the viruses to uh, mutate and also uh, the child to become more uh, susceptible to infection. So making sure the temperatures are maintained during the bathing time. Uh, oiling can definitely be done. Uh, it is not something which uh, one has to restrain from. Thank you, Dr. Rohini. Moving on to the next question, and this question is for Dr. Dhanashree. Uh, weight gain issue in four-year-old boy and one-year-old baby girl. Okay. So... First of all, no, it is best such queries are best addressed in person because there may be some special situations, you know, which are relevant to them only. So only to enumerate, first of all, you know, these what I'm talking about are the general uh, queries and general points that we will look for in, in case of not gaining weight. So first of all is you note down the weight and height of the child that is all these parameters are you also look at the record how it has been in the past, whether you know this problem is just acute it is just recent and onset or it has been a trend yeah, has it always been there from the beginning, you even need to look at the birth history you know children who are born preterm who are low birth weight, they may sometimes grow slowly. To begin with, you know, they need to catch up with other children of their own age. They take some time to do that. They may take even up to four years. Then you need to see if there has been any history on any recurrent infections. You know, those infections may act like speed breakers to the growth. And that is the reason why they may not be growing. Then you need particular importance needs to be given to the height gain also. Because if the height suffers, you know, it's something some very severe. It's called a stunting. So that needs proper evaluation, may need some blood test. We need to see, you know, whether there are some kind of hormonal imbalances or some conditions like say hypothyroidism, which is prevalent and quite common in children. So those sort of things need to be addressed on a personal basis. 
you know when a child comes into the clinic you know we look at the child you know immediately you get the impression with how is the child is the child well built how is the child looking well nourished or not you know looking wasted like the muscles are not developed at all the child is very short those kind of things will immediately give certain clues you know like on examination like i said before anemia is very common if a child is looking very pale that child you know because of the low hemoglobin they also have a very poor appetite so they, that may also reflect having a poor weight gain Okay, sometimes they have things like worm infestation, which may add on to it. You know, the child does not digest the food properly in the worm infestation, also has loss of blood through the stool, which adds to the anemia. So multiple things may be going on at that time. So it's best to evaluate such cases on a personal basis, but certain general things I have uh, mentioned. Thank you, Dr. Dhanashree. Moving on to the next question, and I think this is also a continuation from what Dr. Dhanishree pointed out initially about wearing a mask. The question is best ways to combat illness in children and also uh, should masks be continued to be worn, especially to school? This question is for Dr. Amit. I, I think so. Uh, the children below, my personal opinion is that children above age of uh, five years should be wearing masks. And the school should be also restraining the kids who are been sick. They should not be come to the school because what happens uh, instead of wearing masks, the kids play with each other and then they transmit the infection. So you can, practically speaking, everybody can uh, say that they should wear a mask. But practically, this will not be happening. They're touching their hands and everything at the mask and uh, nose and mouth, and they will transmit the infection. So. Practically speaking, there is actually no need of wearing mask in the schools, but theoretically, yes, you can wear it. And uh, <clears throat> only uh, my suggestion would be the school should avoid the children who are sick coming to the school. That way, there will be break in the, the chain of transmission rather than wearing the mask. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amit. Moving on to the uh, next question that I have is for Dr. Rohini. How to handle hyperactive kids? So uh, hyperactivity or uh, attention deficit uh, hyperactive disorder. Uh, first of all, again, we have, it's a spectrum of disease. One has to look into the complete picture of it. Uh, hyperactivity per se is... Uh, many very common among, the, among uh, toddlers, among uh, young children, school going children, but one also has to look the other aspects to it. Uh, does the child have any social distancing? Does the child have, uh, you know, has difficulty in speech? So one has to look into various other aspects of uh, activity as well. It is not just the uh, hyperactivity, which is concerning. So proper assessment is important followed by the diagnosis. Unless and until we know what exactly is the cause, we can never teach or give a proper diagnostic uh, or measures to improve it. So uh, ideally, the, in such scenario, the child should be uh, brought to a, their local pediatrician. Uh, dev thorough development assessment has to be done, followed by which a therapeutic measures or guidance can be taken. So one has to look into the causes of it. Of course, uh, the first time the child, because every parent now and then will say, my child doesn't sit. This is the most common complaint. But on a personal assessment, many pediatricians feel that this is a normal thing. The child follows instructions. The child may, uh, you know, uh, take whatever instruction we're doing uh, very sincerely. But however, in that environment, the child behaves act uh, extremely active. So uh, putting it into hyperactive domain, is a completely clinical diagnosis which should come from a proper thorough assessment. So ideally the parent should visit their doctor, have a proper counseling done regarding the child and then only the therapeutic measures can be implemented. There cannot be a one protocol ways of treating, of, uh, you know, treating them. They, it is always individualized. It is always based on the deficits the child has. Thank you, Dr. Rohini. Moving on to the next question, uh, I have for Dr. Dhanashree. My nine-month-old baby has passed stool thrice till afternoon. Is this diarrhea? If yes, what diet should be followed? 
So we need a little more of the history. I think this is not sufficient enough. We will be asking questions like, what is the regular habit of the baby? How many times does the baby pass motion usually? If this is more, num more than the usual number of times, we ask about the consistency. Is it like a completely watery motion? Is there blood that was visible in the motion? You know, these things will point out towards something called as invasive diarrhea. Are there any associated symptoms? Like, is the child running a fever? Is the child very sick? You know, not passing urine frequently. Is the child vomiting along with it? And such kind of things will help us to come to the conclusion whether it's a diarrhea or not. But just saying that three times the baby has passed motion no, is not really a diarrhea for this age. In this age, they do still have the persistence of something called as gastrocolic reflux, meaning as soon as the baby eats something, the baby will pass motion. That is normal. That cannot be called as a diarrhea. But uh, you need to know some more details about this. We need to know about the dietary history of the baby, the examination of the baby, and then we can classify it whether it is diarrhea or not. Thank you, Dr. Dhanashree. Moving on to the next question. This is for Dr. Amit. My child is three months old as on today. There are health professionals visiting home for giving polio drops to children. Should I take it uh, for my child? Since then, uh, since when are we supposed to give them these drops or are they covered in the vaccination drives? Till how long the kids should take these drops? Also, what medicine should we give to kids of three months old for cough and cold? Uh, she's having watery eyes and nose. I have been giving Dalcon as prescribed by one of the doctor and uh, Nasoclea for the nose. I think the, there are so many questions. I, I will repeat if uh, you want me to. Now, first question is about the oral polio vaccination. Now, yes. uh, India is a polio-free country. Uh, we are declared as a polio-free country a couple of years back. And still, we have been using the oral polio vaccine. Now, the countries who has been uh, declared as a polio-free country, they have stopped using oral polio vaccine. But still, uh, we are using the bivalent, means two viruses, oral polio vaccines in our country, because of our neighboring countries are not polio-free, like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal, Pakistan. These are not polio-free. So there can be spillover from these countries to our, uh, our country. But that's why we are continuing with the oral polio vaccine. Now, usually in the routine immunization, we give the oral polio vaccine plus injectable polio vaccine. Uh, they both cover uh, bovine means intestinal immunity as well as the uh, the intramuscular means the body immunity. Now, what happens? Uh, these are uh, the government recommends to give at uh, uh, in uh, six months interval the polio vaccines, which are which are supplementary immunization day on top of regular immunization. So, each and every child at that area should receive oral polio vaccination on top of their regular immunization. This is the first question's answer. Second question's answer, answer that uh, about uh, having cough and cold and giving delcon and uh, nasal mist. I think so the kid needs to be seen in the clinic rather than uh, telling in the uh, this one uh, at this for online forum. It should be seen in the clinic and accordingly advise the medicines. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Amit. Moving on to the next question. Uh, this question is for Dr. Rohini. My baby is less than a month now. Baby is also underweight, premature baby. So how to maintain and increase their immunity and health with weight? How to make them feel secure during thunderstorms and heavy rains? And what precautions do we need to take if we have to go out or travel in that heavy storm and rain? So uh, handling a premature infant is definitely different from handling a term infant. Uh, prematurity uh, has its own risks and factors. So uh, immunity in per se, all premature infants have uh, decreased immunity as compared to any term infant. So term infant would be anybody who has covered the gestation of more than 37 weeks of gestation. Anybody less than that, 37 weeks is preterm infant. So uh, we do know that that in the third trimester, essentially, most of the uh, immune cells have been transferred to the babies. So premature infants, are, uh, as compared to term infants, are 
a little uh, they uh, they uh, vary in the immunity and have decreased immunity so it is also important that their nutrition is taken care of uh, i'm sure uh, your pediatricians will uh, tell you in ways of maintaining uh, your breast milk lactation initially we start with what is spoon and subsequently we try to give them on breast feeds so premature infants making sure that nutrition intake is well essentially we should be giving only mother's milk so 100% uh, milk should be given uh, of the mother it could be with assisted feeding or it could be with direct breast feeding uh, followed by which we have to also make sure that the hygiene is extremely uh, maintained parents should uh, wash their hands put a mask if they are ill uh, all the uh, baby products which are used for the baby for any assisted feeding should be well sanitized and kept so sustained weight gain can only occur if a required amount of volume of feed is given we also start supplements for premature infants uh, low birth weight infants so timely supplementing them with multivitamins is equally important uh, essentially mother's milk and uh, and the supplements help to boost the immunity of the baby similarly in situations where uh, we do restrict traveling in preterm and uh, low birth weight infants but if circumstances are unavoidable one has to make sure the transport in which they are traveling in uh, of course when there are stormy weather conditions are not very favorable one has to be uh, very cautious about traveling you have to make sure that the child is uh, extremely well warm because premature infants are also very prone to hypothermia that is not able to maintain the temperature uh, hypothermia can also sustainably uh, make the child lose weight and not maintain a sustained weight gain so during hypoth during uh, thunderstorms or during uh, conditions where the temperatures are very low the child can be moved in with kmc kmc is called as kangaroo mother care where the child where the baby can be put in between the mother's bare chest and uh, the temperature of the mother helps to maintain the temperature of the baby uh, this can this way of transporting infants can be done during uh, uh situations where the temperatures are low or thunderstorms are present and of course the tra uh, the the traveling uh, is needed so making sure the temperatures are maintained for preterm infants ad adequate nutrition in terms of uh, mother's milk and supplementation these are the important factors which has to be taken care so that the baby can sustainably uh, gain weight thank you dr rohini Moving on to the next question. Uh, so as you have mentioned, Dr. Rohini, that uh, taking care of a pre, uh, premature child is different. The second question is about immunity building in general during this season among uh, children. And this question is for Dr. Dhanashri. I think some of the general measures we have made, this may be a repetition. No? So uh, just to sum it up, no? so for very young infants, breastfeeding, uh, keeping their surroundings very clean, avoiding contact with people who are ill. This is particularly for those who are less than two months or so. And older children, you know, starting their vaccination, keeping up with the vaccination on time, uh, looking at their diet, you know, uh, preferably for six months is exclusive breastfeeding. Even after that, the kind of diet is given, you know, needs to be monitored by either a dietitian or a pediatrician. You know, sometimes that is where they falter, you know, they may be giving very diluted sort of they may just give cow milk which is diluted a lot that is not a good supplementary food for a baby who's about six months so these things need to be explained you know how the diet should be introduced how things should be uh, graded up keeping a regular track of their weight and height um, again you know just to re-emphasize after six months completion starting with the flu vaccine flu vaccine helps give a little cross protection also with other viruses then the cleanliness and hygiene of the surroundings okay then if somebody else is not well at home uh, that person you know if the baby is small needs to be a little away from them or you know the tissues or kerchiefs whatever they're using that needs to be disposed or cleaned properly there needs to be proper ventilation in the house if it is possible passive smoking also you know is a risk factor for everybody in the house having you know it makes everybody susceptible to recurrent respiratory infection so that should be avoided there should be proper ventilation you know how the smoke of the you know whatever 
the cooking is done at home how that thing is tackled there should be a proper chimney or exhaust or whatever that is you know avoiding overcrowding avoiding uh, unnecessary travel in large groups you know when we know that certain viruses are circulating these all i think should sum up the general measures you know taking care of the surroundings also in terms of stagnant water for you know mosquito borne illnesses and avoiding unnecessary contact with people who are sick these things should you know sum up the general measures to maintain the immunity and prevent infections in this season thank you dr dhanushri uh, and this will be our last question for the session and this question is for dr amit uh, that uh, he, the question says that what kind of medicine they should keep handy uh, just to take care of their child during this season <clears throat> basically uh, the fever medications like any paracetamol syrups or drops they can keep with them and uh, little uh, the anti tussative or uh, cold medicines they can take also for vomiting also they can keep with them because in emergency they have to run to the hospital they can take care at the night so some of the uh, vomiting fever and cough and cold medicines they should be handy at home when there is a need and the most important part is the dose dosage of that medicine needs to be known before because sometimes i have seen kids coming with the over dosage and uh, causing problems so dose as well as the medicines should be handy at home thank you doctors for joining us today i'm sure it was really insightful for all our community members who is a part of the live session now and uh, if you want to get in touch with dr dhanashri or dr amit or dr rohini they are available in pune sb road unit you can get uh, an online consultation done with them through our cloud9 application and for physical consultation they are also available in the unit from monday to saturday at all times uh, the pune sb road uh, they also provide home vaccination across the city uh, so in case you want to get in touch and you have any problem during this season i'm sure they will be able to help you and they are happy to help you uh, that's all for today thank you we also have a new unit coming up in pimply sodagar in pune so do check that out as well thank you thank you